there's a discussion about Jonathan Kaminga happening right now that is it's a little wild. wild. It's a little wild. It's not like here's I don't want to. So uh, uh, Mark Nash in our in our YouTube chat. Shout out to Mark. Appreciate you watching. Um, he said that the Kings should trade Harrison Barnes, Kevin Herter, and two firsts for Jonathan Kaminga. Multiple firsts. So I don't want to. Here, here's the thing. I don't want. This is not like. This is not the worst idea I've ever heard in my life. I don't want this to come across in a mocking way. Like, let's break this down and let's talk about it as a as a concept. Because Mark just just said in the chat, Jonathan Kaminga, if you know ball, Jonathan Kaminga can play four positions. Um, I, I watch a lot of Warriors basketball, I promise. Um, no, he can't. Well, and if one of those is left out, he can. Stop. Um, so we, we, when we're on a little bit different sides of this because I'm higher on Jonathan Kaminga than you are. You think he's closer to out of the league than being in the start well, in a starting lineup. That was that was a year ago. Like at, at this point, like he's proven that he's a rotational player, but he's a rot- he's not a rotational player on a good team. Sure. A- at this point in his career. And like I liken to him, I-, I liken him right now to a bunch of dudes who played for the Detroit Pistons. Like he he can put up numbers, mm-hmm. but can he impact winning sure. at this point yes. in his career? And right. the answer is probably not nearly as much as like warrior a lot of warriors fans would think but also just in general like well, and that's what coming is still 21 yeah and that's the that is where mark that is where his argument lies i think and that is where i think he's coming from and and mark if you're not i'm trying to help you out here pal but <laughs> so if you disagree with me here then uh, i got nothing for you but like, i'm trying to get into into the eyes of where that makes sense because you're right on the surface it doesn't like jonathan kaminga it, it's really clear is not ready to take on the role of a player that the kings need now jonathan kaminga in four or five years maybe maybe the two idealized, years maybe two years sure, yeah the idealized version of jonathan kaminga yes is exactly what the kings need because the idealized version of jonathan kaminga is can handle the ball can knock down a three when you're late in the shot clock and you need somebody who is big and strong and jumps high to get into the lane and get you a bucket or get to the free throw line, then a hundred percent. That is that is the ceiling for Jonathan Kaminga. And then and then as a defender, I mean, we we've seen him lock up Jason Tatum in big spots. It's just not consistent enough. But as a defender, again, you see this super high ceiling, and all of a sudden you're going, dude, there's a two way superstar here. So I understand where somebody would go, hey. The Kings should acquire this guy for uh, their two biggest contracts that could be traded and a bunch of first round picks or a couple of first round picks. I don't want to misconstrue a couple of first round picks. Mm-hmm. I get I I get why that's enticing. But now let's go to reality. And the reality is what you just said. The reality is, hey, Jonathan Kaminga is probably not there. No, at least not yet. Not where. He's cutting at the exact right time and he's taking a dribble handoff and he's knocking down a three off the dribble and he's playing really sound defense and he's just not like that's what <laughs> because look as much as the the Kings could use him like that so could Golden State yes they could really desperately use a player like that especially where the the core of their team is headed age wise yes so if they're willing to give him up, that's probably a sign that he's not the player the Kings need right now. I hope I properly rode the fence there. Yeah, like, look, I don't think he's a bad player. And, and like, look, every player has to develop. And that's something that, like, we talked about with, um, with even I talked about it with, about Luca yesterday. Like, people, like, we are harsh on Luca. And, and mm-hmm. as a, a, a guy who loves to watch basketball, I don't love watching Luca play. But, we also have to understand he's 25 years old and he's getting better and he's proving that he is the generational talent that people mm-hmm. talk about. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, that's not, like, that's not who Kaminga is yet. Kaminga is a player that has a ton of room to grow, mm-hmm. which it, which is great, mm-hmm. but there's also potential for him to never reach that. And for him to reach the statistical pinnacle that people think he might reach, mm-hmm. 
and still not be an impactful basketball player on the court. Mm -hmm. And that's a problem. Like, and this and this ties into so let's reel this in because I don't think the Warriors are trading Kaminga to to the Kings for that for yeah. that package. I think Golden State, from everything I I hear and know, uh, they want to hold on to him. Now, if a team comes in with a Godfather offer because that team is like we need Jonathan Kaminga, then sure they'll move him. Yeah, but I don't think they're aiming to move him. So let's bring this back and let's relate this to the Kings. I think we can take this conversation about Jonathan Kaminga and apply that to pick a young player. Pick a player in the draft. Any young player. Any just just any any player that you're going, hey, upside, 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 upside needs development. I love the upside though. That's not where Sacramento is. There's too much urgency for them to go, yeah, we'll take a flyer on this guy for a couple of years. And if he doesn't work out, then we'll move on and we'll we'll try this again yeah. later. You don't have a couple of years to let a guy like Jonathan Kaminga or any other player. That's why when we talk about a draft pick for them, it's like yeah, they're way more likely to move that pick because whoever they take in the draft, A, they don't know what he is in the NBA, and B, they don't have time to figure it out. They need to make a some kind of substantial jump now. Yes. Not in three years. And that's, again, to, to move this away from Jonathan Kaminga and bring it to, to the Kings and something more relevant, that's going to color a lot of the conversations we have throughout this offseason. Yes. It's at the number 13 pick is, is going to take two to three years, and you don't know if you're getting anything, where the number 13th pick might be worth a guy who is the sixth or seventh man in your rotation, who's 26 years old and can do a bunch of stuff, but isn't a star somewhere. And someone's going to go, like, look, I will give up a really good player to go move to 13. He's not a great player, mm -hmm. but he's under contract, and you can take him off my hands. Mm -hmm. And I will continuously go back to this in like the 2016 draft, uh, the Kings traded Marco Bellinelli for the 20, the number 22 pick in the NBA draft. Marco Bellinelli is a rotational player in the NBA. At that point, he is a six, seven, eight man, great shooter off the bench, right? That's what they were able to get. The Kings need to do that trade in reverse, or <laughs> they need to use that trade that that pick to go get something much bigger, use it in a much bigger package mm -hmm. uh, trade to go get a star level player with other first round picks and, and contracts and stuff like that. That's where the Kings are at. Mm -hmm. That There is no mistaking like where they are at. They're a team who feels like they are maybe one really, really good piece away from jumping right back into the fray with mm -hmm. OKC, with Minnesota, with Denver to get into the top four of the Western Conference mm -hmm. and stay there for the next five years with Demontis Bonus and, and De'Aaron Fox and Keegan Murray and hopefully uh, Malik Monk. That's yeah. that's where they're at. So mm -hmm. again, Kaminga is a player that's nice. He's just, he's nice like a couple of years from now, maybe. Yeah. And we don't know yet. No. Yeah. I, I, I'm I, that's just kind of where it's at. Somebody said it, it sounds like, um, it sounds like Kyle, me, it sounds like you want, uh, Katie or Paul George like, <laughs> yeah, for the right trade package. Sure. But I don't, I don't think that those teams are going to accept a trade package that the Kings would be willing to, to give up. I don't, I don't No, I don't. Well, well I mean, it. you never know what's going to be out there. That's what I keep telling me. You never know what's going to be out there, but right but so it's not it's not necessarily that uh it's just more getting known quantities it's not necessarily a paul george or kevin durant level player it's just i mean it'd be nice for sure but it's mm -hmm. just getting a player that you know hey this player has has had x amount of success in this league and we know he can do y and z on both ends of the floor and this is where he's going to fit in the rotation we know this yes that matters way more than oh upside yeah, it's just not. It's not. It's not where they're at, man. And um, I, I, I think that's an important note. And uh, appreciate, like I said, appreciate Mark for um, floating that out there so we could sparking get some some, get some, some debate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That said, I would not. If I'm the Kings, we're not doing that deal. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> just, to, just to be clear. <laughs> no, not at all. I'm not uh, like again. You can love Kaminga or not, but Kaminga is not to a point where he is a player who impacts winning on a really good team. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm right there with you, man.